Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ice Cold Takes podcast. I'm your host, Joey DiMeglio, and this week I'm throwing a curveball, <laughs> pun fully intended, because we're talking about baseball, and my good buddy Noah is here to join me. But before we get into that, we have to talk about that Kevin Weeks response I got on Thursday. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. Noah, how's it going? Thanks for joining me, buddy. Thanks, Joe. It's nice to be back. Yep. Uh, if you if you don't know, if you're not familiar, Noah Cheskis is uh, a co-worker of mine at New World Pizza, and he was there to witness the big the big Kevin Weeks reaction we got yesterday. Yes. So it's time for the pizza story. Dun dun dun. Uh, you know, been at it for 65 days with Kevin Weeks. It's it's been a journey. It's been a journey every single day. Hashtag asking for weeks. We thinking of changing his name his name to instead of Kevin Weeks to Kevin Months. And if that doesn't work out, we'll change it to <laughs> Kevin Years. But I've had some people tell me, Oh, Joey, you should you should you should do one of those week style videos where you, you know, break a trade or something. Announce that you need Kevin Weeks on your podcast to go at a random place, go inside a washing machine or something. So me, uh you know, thinking about it, I was like, okay, that might actually work. So, of course, since I'm at the pizzeria all the time, I decided to go in front of the pizza oven and film a stupid 20 second video. And I stole Noah's sunglasses, it's which have his actually. initials carved into it. Yeah, very nice pair of sunglasses, I got to say. Um, so I, I, I go into, I go into the, the, the video. The, I get the video of the pizza, the pizza oven. I threw a slice in there because you can't just have a video of the pizza oven with nothing in the background. Come I on mean, now. What's it's going to look like, it's like, Oh, just a random pizza oven. Now you, you got to have at least something in there. I, you know yeah. what? I would have, I would have asked him just made a pie. Yeah. I should have, I should have asked the, the guys just for the fun of it. Yeah. I should have asked the guys to, to make, make a pizza or a couple or something just for show. And then mm -hmm. we would have eaten, eaten them, eaten them, whatever. Um, but yeah, I threw a slice in there just to just to make it look good because it's not some Joe Schmo pizza pizza. I mean, I am Joe, but uh, that's some Joe Schmo uh, pizza oven. That's sure. a, that pie could that oven could actually fit twenty eight pies in it. Um, yeah. But so I throw this the slice in there, twenty second video, and I send the thing to my support group, the OCS network. Great group of guys, by the way. Awesome group of guys. You all should follow every single one of those podcasts we're going to get a podcast for every single city every single hockey team there's going to be one on our network mark my words but they were so gracious to retweet it and eventually kevin weeks found it liked it and quote tweeted it and i lost my freaking mind no what were what was what did you see from your perspective okay i'm not trying to sound lazy or anything like that but at work I was just sitting there on my phone and he posted it. He took the video, he posted it and you know, la la la. What was it? Maybe half an hour. Yeah. yeah. They're like one forty five ish was yeah. when I posted the video. Yeah. And it was probably 40, 45 minutes or so later. I'm just sitting there, you know, scrolling through whatever I was scrolling through, probably Instagram. And all of a sudden Joe is probably 15 feet to my right. And all of a sudden, I just hear, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I said, what? Like, he actually startled <laughs> me because I was, you know, I'm not, you know, expecting to hear that. I'm like, I'm like, what? He goes, <laughs> he goes, Kevin Weeks, he looked at it, he looked at it, he liked it, and he responded. Ah, <laughs> ah. And he starts walking around, he starts walking in circles and everything like that. I said, are you kidding me? He goes, swear to God, swear to God. I said, that's pretty cool. He goes, I said, what did he say? I forget what he, I forget what he told me to be honest. He I'm said, like, he said he appreciated the, the intense yeah. heavy four check. And he said that I needed to buy him a slice of pizza. That's Kevin right. Weeks. And then, and then you're like, yeah. oh, I'll buy you, I'll buy you pizza whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There were customers in the store too. And I heard them. They're like, what? What's going on here? Yeah, I think What's going on? Oh my gosh. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't care. I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. Yeah. We are doing this right now. It's a big victory. I am freaking out. It's a it's, it's a big victory. Like you said, 65 days. 
65 days. That's a long time. Now, I think that's, that my that's fa- yeah. two plus months. Yeah, Kevin Munz. Kevin Munz. Um, my favorite comment on that whole thing. Someone said, fire your agent, Kevin. You should have waited till day 70 to get a free drink with the pizza. <laughs> but the way he said pizza, he called it za. I love it. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he called it za. Oh with the, the apostrophe ZA. That's how you're supposed to say it. That's the abbreviation. Za. That's, that's a cool way to say it. Yeah. I mean, I was freaking out. Now like, I just you, need to set up. I Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen you so hyped about something before. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. lie. It was. No one, it, no one I watch sports at the pizzeria all the time. Like, yeah. back in the they, day, we used to, Friday hockey. nights, we'd have a game on, whether yep. it's baseball or hockey. Yep. And we watch it, and I would, I'd be jumping up and down when something good happened to the Mets or when the Rangers scored a goal. Yep. But to you, that was the most hype that I yep. got. It, I got to agree. But you know what? I'm not gonna lie to you. I think you were at school when this happened, but when it was me and your dad working one night, it was when the Rangers beat the Flyers. It was a Wednesday night. I remember specifically. It was a Wednesday night rivalry, and I, I 99% sure the score was 9 nothing Rangers. I know I exactly which game you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I was, I, I was I don't think I've ever seen your dad so happy before. <laughs> and, and he goes, text Joe, text Joe. Did you call him Joe? Text Joe. I said, I'm, I said, I'm, I'm like 99% sure he's probably just watching the game. I said, he goes, text him anyway. Text him anyway. I said, okay. And then <laughs> I think I texted you and – I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, of course he's watching. He goes, is he happy? Is he happy? I'm like, yeah, of course he's happy. I'm the only one who's crying like, like a little girl. You could say it. I yeah. I was like a little bitch. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It, it just kept piling and on and piling on. That was, I think that was that was the most that was the most excited I've ever seen your dad. And I think yesterday was the most excited I've ever seen you. Mind you. No, and I actually went to a Rangers Flyers game in Philly, and the Rangers yep. won. And that was a good game. That was good. It was a good game. It was a three-two game. Three-two, three-two game. Worth the price of admission for sure, I'd yeah. say. And it was a great game. But I didn't. I don't remember myself freaking out as much as I freaked out yesterday. It's just I that think, seriously, I don't think you did. It's just that rush of serotonin or whatever, whatever enzyme. I went to school for biology. I should know this. Whatever thing it was that that rush, dopamine, serotonin, that I got like, oh my god, I got a blue check mark to respond to me. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. Like that. That was that's actually nuts. A- actually, like, um, I'm so happy we got Kevin Weeks to respond. So many people I got to thank, like for for all the support. If you've been following along since day one of the drive, I remember doing it from day one. I was like in my lab, in my lab back at school. I'm like, all right, let's at start Stevens? this. Let's... Yeah, at Stevens. I was doing, uh, I was waiting for a reaction to, uh, uh, to, to finish. It was shaking on the mixer. And I was just like, all right, day one of uh, hashtag asking for weeks at Kevin Week. It was right around the trade deadline when, he's, when he went viral. So, you know, oh. you always got to, you got to do, uh, you got to do the, you got to grab the sunglasses and, you know, do it the right way. Hang on a second. Hold up. Oh, it's mine? No, these are mine. What's going on, Ice Cold Takes fans? This is Joey D here reporting live from the podcast with some breaking news. Breaking news. Kevin Weeks responded yesterday. I'm so happy and thankful after 65 days of asking. Now let's just hope it's not another 65 days for him to open his DMs. Kevin, we need you to respond. I will send you a pizza pie immediately. And I will I will I will ship you and pay for an ice cold take sh- t-shirt. There you go. I'll do whatever. Free pizza for life. I'll send you a pizza. Have a have a blessed day everybody. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There but you, go. you know There's what? Your I, ice will take that was longer than the one. That was longer than the one with pizza oven. To make it that one, that one was yeah for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's alright. Yeah, for, yeah, okay. And moving on from the pizza story, that was incredible. I think that's the best pizza story I've ever told on the podcast, aside from the fake fifty one that I told last year. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. 
Who dealt um, with that? Who dealt with that? I forget. That was me. That that was it? figured out. So I made the mistake, and I corrected it. The guy came in a month later, and the cop was like, "You should have never came back. <laughs> you got away with it, and then you came back, <sighs> and we got you." Don't you uh, love the dumbness of people? Yeah, I know. I mean, like, came right into my, right into the palms of my hands. It's unbelievable. And he's just like, oh, man, I got caught. All right, but anyways, moving on. We do have some Rangers news to cover today. This is not a, you know, a lack of hockey episode. This is, we have a teeny tiny bit of Rangers information that I could talk about. Capo Caco finally, finally re-signed with the Rangers. Two years, $2.1 million. It's about time. I remember a lot of people were saying that Capo Caco should have gotten closer to, will be getting closer to two and a half million just because of his draft pedigree, second overall pick, right? He was already making 2.3 and he wasn't a second overall pick. He was like 21st, 17th overall, some at past 15, pick 15 in 2017. Mm -hmm. He's already making that much, so Caco should make more. Jury nickel and dimed him to get his his asking price down, which was good. Rangers you need know, as much cap space as possible. Exactly, they had to. They had to. They, they I, how what we talked about yesterday? How much cap space they've left? Like nine hundred grand. Yep, nine hundred thousand dollars. I think is what they have left. It's they, not going to be much. There was, there was no wiggle room. You know, you can usually say, oh, you know, there's, you know, oh, someone. There's usually wiggle room. No. There's no way you could trade some like you could trade somebody maybe like I mean, that's or, what you have send to do. somebody down. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you can't trade any. But what are you going to do? Trade Reeves? I don't think the Rangers are going to trade Reeves. No, he's their big man. Yeah, he's their energy guy in the locker room. Mm -hmm. A little expensive, almost two million dollars. But you know what? I will take his energy. Whatever, it's fine. If 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 Tyler Mott wants to play for eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, he could play for eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. But there's no shot that he's gonna play for for that cheap. The guy's a really good player. Uh, I hope he goes and you know goes to a good team and he does well for them. And I wish him all the best. But you know, Capo Caco was the was the big one that we needed to get. Hopefully yeah. now he's gonna get top six minutes uh, this year. You just told me Owen Tippett resigned for the Flyers, so yep. he's another young guy. I think he's going to yep. be a pretty good player. Yeah, High draft pick. Mm -hmm. And he came over in the Drew trade. Yep. He came over in the Drew. He was, he was the uh, the main point of that trade. The centerpiece. Like, yes. He was the center. Yeah. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. He was the centerpiece of the trade. Um, and to sign him was yesterday or today. I think it was today, wasn't it? I think so. To ink him back on was huge because he's a big, or he's going to be a big piece for wherever the Flyers are into this <laughs> upcoming season. Who I'm interested it? to see Who what knows Tortorella what is going to happen. Do. I'm interested to see how Tortorella is going to do that because he's one of my favorite coaches. Like, just, I mean, not because he played for the Rangers, but like when he was at Columbus, his interviews were always spicy. You know what I mean? Like, him I and still to this, yeah. Him, him and D'Angelo. That's going to be a very interesting, interesting like relationship there because he is very hard on defensemen. Like, if you don't play the way that he he wants you to play, you're, you're going to get the bench. Yeah, you're going to get the bench. And I'm I know sure. Tortorella went out and said that D'Angelo is a good player. That I'm sure I'll I'll be happy to have him. But I want to see like when D'Angelo makes some defensive mistakes, what what Tortorella is going to do how he's going to respond and then how D'Angelo is going to behave on top of that. Like that's going to be like, like prime TV that I want to see. I, I want to see like, there should be a camera on D'Angelo and Tortorella at all you times. Know, they should, Tortorella should have like, should be mic'd up. Like, you know how the NFL season. has like the hard knocks or whatever it is. The for hard like knocks. A, yeah. For like a specific team each season, they should have that just on D'Angelo and Tortorella. No one that else. No one else. Just two of them. That's yeah. what that's what I want to see. I would watch or, that, even though I'm not a Flyers fan. I would or, watch that. Or Atkinson and him too, I guess. Because yeah. room because you know, they're saying that him and Tortorello, or he loved how Tortorello was his coach in Columbus. Mm hmm But at the same time he didn't. He, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. He's a, he was a goal scorer. Atkinson's a goal scorer and 
I don't know. Tortorella doesn't seem. Yeah, Tortorella doesn't seem to have a good relationship with goal scorers. He did with Panarin though, but you know what? Panarin's a, a reliable, a reliable defender. Actually, like I, I mean, Panarin's Atkins, a good. Atkins, Atkinson's average at defense. He, he's you know he can play defense, but he's nothing special, and he's not gonna you know really go out of his way to make a big defensive play. That. That's what I see. That's what I see Atkinson as. You know, he's right now he's, you know, excuse me, their big guy on offense. No more Giroux. Gutierrez here and Vortrek there. Vorchek is gone. Vorchek went in that in the trade for Atkinson. Yep. And, you know, they'll have Kevin Hayes back and all that stuff. But, I mean, Atkinson's, I think, their guy right now for yeah. offense. For offense. So. It's going to be an interesting year for the Flyers. Like I told you, I told you that there's going to be, there's still going to be a lot of losing. It's just going to be a lot less painful. I don't know. About it will that. be painful, but painful in a different way. Like two to one, three to two losses, I'd say. You need a goalie. Carter Hart's got to stand on his head. I think, you know what? I think this is his season. This is his proof season. What he does this season is what he is. I think. Hmm. I, I, all right. I think. Same, but Flyers should have never, never given know. up on Bobrovsky years ago. I mean, yeah. he sucks now. He's not as good now as he was with Columbus. But, but look, he was Bobrovsky the best. Should've... He was the best goal in the league for what three years or so? For, for a couple of years, yeah. Like he at, stole at Vesna. He stole Vesna, which I think should have gone to Lundqvist in 2013. He You're stole biased. that from. Biased. He stole. He stole that from. Uh, from what's it called? He did win. He won. I think he won two Vesna trophies, Bobrovsky. He, he? he was a legitimate legitimate goalie. Well, let let me double check this. Let's let's uh let's do some some live fact checking. Sergey Bobrovsky, uh, Vezina. Hey Sergey, I took your trophy. That's what Tuka Raff said to uh to Sergey Bobrovsky <laughs> when he uh uh Wait. when he won the Vezina. I saw that meme. Tukarev's. Second career Vezina. Yeah, yeah. He won two you with Columbus. Back back. Not back to back. No, 2013. And 2017, I believe. Uh, wow. Let's see. Yeah, 2017. He That's won. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, oh, damn. 41, 17, and 5. 2.06 goals against average. 931 save percentage. Seven shutouts in 63 games in uh in uh, 2017. Yeah, that's, that's what was his good. average? Uh, 2.06 goals against average. That's stellar. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's a really good. That's very good. 41, Bravo. Oh, my God. 41 wins? Almost as good as DeGrom's, like, sub-2 ERA. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of baseball, it is time for the new segment of the Ice Cold Takes podcast, The Changeup. We're going to talk about baseball now. We're no longer Ice Cold Takes, a New York Rangers hockey podcast. It's going to be Ice Cold Takes, a New York sports podcast. And, you know, what better way to start this off than with the Subway Series this week? The Mets and the Yankees faced off in a two-game set at City Field, and the Mets won both games. Let's go. Yankees fans, you'll have next time, I think, in August or something like that to fight back. But while the Mets were, were kicking Yankee butt, the Phillies went and did the Mets a favor by taking, what was it, two out of three against the Braves? Two or three. Yep. All right. That's what I'm talking about. The one time but I get to pull for the Phillies. Do you know why? They were lucky, very lucky, because they stole game one from them. They really stole. It was bomb in the eighth. They were down to run. Two quick outs, just like that. Base hit, base hit, and then on a 3-2 pitch, uh, Braves pitcher Minter, he hung uh, a cutter, I think it was, middle in to Bryson Stott, and he just yanked it out to right field. Because Damn. the Braves had all the momentum in that game. I was I watched from like the third inning on, third or fourth inning on. The Phil, you know, they scored runs. The Phillies they scored three before then, but they didn't have any momentum. Like every time they scored, it's just like oh yeah okay yeah okay. But then once those two out base hits in the bottom of the eighth, and then the home run, obviously that's when momentum switched. But they just looked dead, Ab- absolutely dead. And I was like, what, what the hell is going on here? What the hell? But then got the home run, 
fin- top of the ninth. One, two, three. No problem. No problem. Nice. And no, no issues with Familia or whoever is closing your games in that bullpen, that Phillies bullpen. Stupid Familia. No, I'm still <laughs> waiting. I'm still waiting for him to be released, but it's not, <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Hopefully, Phillies happen. fans were were going off on Familia this morning, right? Yep. Yeah, he gave, um, he gave five runs last night to the Pirates, who who don't even deserve to be in the major leagues. The entire team, <laughs> does, the entire team doesn't deserve to be in the major leagues. And he gave he gave up he gave up five runs and six batters. Oh my goodness! Yeah, or seven, is, or seven batters, whatever it was. I told you this earlier today, but Familia has got, you know, he's he's infamous for losing the strike zone with yeah. that. What whatever he throws a splitter, he um, throws, he still a, throws it sinker. Yeah. He he throws the sinker, splitter, and slider yes. combination, and he'll yeah. have like, he'll have the four seam as well. But it's just like everything, like you throw the sinker in, just stays right over the plate. It's either stays right there in the middle of the plate, or it backs him off the plate, or it's a ball. Mm-hmm. Or if he throws a splitter, it, he hangs it up, and you know, major leaguers they just hit the crap out of that ball. Or slider, same thing. I'm sure Real Muto had had some heavy work to do, you know, with oh the God. the ball Actually, bouncing. Uh, whoever was catching, did he catch yesterday? I don't think he caught yesterday. Actually, I well, whoever was catching, yeah, Brian Schneider, Brian Schneider, wow, Carlos Ruiz, old Phillies catcher. I'll, Those are the guys I remember. I'll take Ruiz back. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, Ch- Chase Utley could be relegated to the minor leagues forever and yes, ever. Sir. Chase Utley, the man. No, not the man. Yeah. Look, not I'm the telling man. you, he owns real estate in center field. Oh, my God. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Or right, right field. Right field. Down the right field line. He owns about 0.1% of the Mets. Now that Steve Co- – it was about like 5% of the Mets before uh, with, with Jeff, Fred and Jeff Wilpon. And then once uh, Steve Cohen took over, it's like 0.1% now because Steve Cohen's so rich now. So – Hold on real quick. The reason why uh, there's why I say he owns part of City Field is because in his first his first like 10 home runs against the Mets at City Field, he always hit it into the right field corner. And if you don't know the right field corner, there's seriously what 10, 15 rows there of seat, or 10, 15 seats there. Just about, I would assume. And then it goes into like the bullpen area. So there's like 15, 15 seats or so. And it was like this little tiny corner that, you know, briefly stuck out and you could just hit one right there. And his first like 10 home runs in city field throughout his, throughout his career, every single home run was right there, whether it was row one or row 10, it was all right there up until I think up until like 2000, 14 or something like that, whenever it was, he finally hit one in the upper deck. But now, Pepsi but now the corner, Pepsi Cola corner. Yeah, is that what it, that's, that's what it is, right? Yeah, Pepsi it corner. was probably the Pepsi corner back in 2013 or 14. It's the Coca Cola corner now. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yes, yes, yes. So now every time there's a ball that's hit into the right field corner and the Phillies are playing there, the broadcaster, Tom McCarthy, who I think I I like him. Joe doesn't like him. Former Met. No, actually, I don't. Okay, I like Tom McCarthy because he used to call the Mets on the radio. He was good. He's That's a right. good announcer. But yeah, he's a good announcer. I don't have any problems with him. The problem okay. I have is that Noah dislikes Gary Cohen. I'm going That's to true. put him on blast right here. It's true. It's very true. Gary Cohen is quite literally, in my opinion, the best announcer, not just in baseball, but the best announcer in all of sports. I said it. That's the ice cold take of the year, and I should log off right now. But go ahead. Continue your story. I can't hear anything. That's weird. Um, Facing some technical difficulties here. Maybe I spoke too loud. Noah might not have liked the, the Gary Cohen is the best of all time. My goodness. Can you hear me? Try the old turn it on, turn it off again thing. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, they're dead. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. we have. Can you hear me? We'll have to go. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. We'll have to go without the headphones for now. Sorry about that, everybody. Technical difficulties. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I shorted out. I shorted out Noah's uh, headphones when I said Gary Cohen was the greatest of all time. You know why? Because I kept hearing Galvis. Galvis. There's, oh. <laughs> there's a player in the Phillies. His his name was Freddie Galvis. G A L V I S. And he always pronounced it Freddie Galvis. And every time I had to watch him, because I only get New York channels, I only get Philly channels, I always heard Freddie Galvis. And I seriously wanted to throw a ball into the TV every time I heard that. I'm like, that is the most annoying thing I've ever heard. Besides, I'm going to put Sunday Night Baseball on the on the hot seat right now. What we talked about, Mark, what was it? Kanye. 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 Oh my god, that was uh, horrible. Yeah, it 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 ran its course. That I thought it was pre- I thought it was cool when when Canna brought it up. Like, yeah, you guys should call me Kanye. Just like just take out my first name altogether and just call me Kanye, like uh, Ronaldinho. Or they like, just call him Mark. Like the, the, yeah, or or Mark. <laughs> just, that's that would be funny. Just he's like yeah, he's like Mark. Beyonce now. Like they 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 even I what I thought was funny was okay when when um. What's his name? When when Canna originally talked about it first, and then when ESPN when he came up to bat next, instead of putting Mark Canna on the score bug, like as up to bat, they just put Canna, like that's it. That's all they put Canna. Like, <laughs> like that was Ichiro. funny. I thought that was good. It's like like, just... like Neymar, you know? Yeah, it's like Ichiro. Ich- Ichiro, there you go, there you go. Like that. I thought that was funny. I thought that was clever. But then like every single inning after that, like Buster only asking Buck Showalter, like. I thought that was cringe. I was like, oh, uh, I don't know about but that. Man. The thing is, he's been in the league for a good five years. How do you not know how to pronounce his name? Canna. It, he, he, it's not rocket science. His wife went on Twitter and was like, it's can a period. End of story. And it's just like, yeah. She said that? Yes. During, like just, during yeah. the broadcast? I don't know if it was during the broadcast, but like she tweeted it at oh some point God. that night or the, the following day. And she was just, she just said it's can a uh, period end of story. That's how you pronounce it. And it's like, yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, I thought it was fun and all. I thought I thought those uh, you know, those mic things when when they mic up a player during the game, I feel like they're so hit or miss. Sometimes you'll get they'll give it to a player that that's so that's too focused in the game or is just not like personable. Canna did a good job. Like that was like the most fun that I've seen. I think they did it. They've done it to Alonso before, and he he's been uh, he's been pretty good. But yeah, then they've so done they, it to other people. To Alonso when they were playing the Phillies, actually. Okay. And yeah. then they did it to Har- Bryce Harper as well. They've done yeah, and they've done it to other other players that are just really quiet that just say two words and that's it. Like it, like they like tried to one of them asked about the weather one time. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. But that's just I, a sign was, of that, that, was, that the uh, conversation is hitting a dead end. Honestly, I think it was like Mike Trout or someone from oh, the Angels. God. If they mic'd up Connor McDavid, it, it, you wouldn't get much of it. You wouldn't get much you get out nothing. of him. You, you, yeah, because that's even, not who he is. You wouldn't even get a response from him. You need to, if you're going to do something like that in hockey, you got to like mic up Ryan Reeves. You have to, you have to mic up a guy like that. Someone like Pin. If Panarin spoke more English, you would mic up Panarin. You think so? I would mic. Yeah, mic he, up, that I'd, guy is legitimately I'd, funny. I'd mic up. I'd mic up Reeves the most. I think actually. Reeves, yeah, I would. I would love to. When I talked to Emily Kaplan, she said that the one person that she'd always wanted to interview from the Rangers is Reeves, and is she? I don't know if she ended up doing it, but yeah, Reeves was Reeves because of his personality, like. A lot of a lot of hockey players shy away from from stuff like they'll give like yeah I just believed in the team, um, we did a good job tonight. Try and keep it simple like. That's what they should be doing, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I also like to see a little bit of flavor too. You know what I mean? I don't want I don't want something stale. Just like the pizza. <laughs> uh, Everything is wrong with stale pizza. You yeah, know? put some spice on there. You can't yeah, have you, you can't have a raw. There. All these people like a raw pizza. Yeah, everybody in yeah. our store in, in in New Jersey likes the pizza raw. I, I can't disgusting. believe it. I think it's disgusting. You gotta cook it. It's like the second you see you see like cheese, it's a little burnt. You turn it over 
Well done. You take a regular normal slice of pizza. You turn it over. There's some color on it, right? There's it's yeah. golden brown or it's a little black, something like that. These people, they like it white. Uh, yeah. They, there's no crunch. There's no taste. There's, there's no, no taste. How, not how to, do you use pizza with no taste? Yeah, I have I have my opinions of Dave Portnoy and his pizza reviews. I think the pizza reviews themselves are are a cool concept. His taste in pizza is questionable. It's questionable. But I do like that he likes his pizza well wait, done. I thought he likes uh he likes a crisp pizza. He, he likes, likes a crisp crunch. pizza. Yep. Okay. That's how that's I like my pizza. I think that's how pizza should be cooked. That's the only way pizza should be cooked. No yeah. offense to all you raw likers, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but there should be some color on that pizza on the crust yeah. and on the bottom. It's not even called it's not well done. It there's no such thing as burnt, in my opinion. No such thing as burnt. It's only cooked or well done. That's it. True. Sure. The sure. bottom is brown or whatever, like that that like the brown that you're talking about, that golden brown kind of mm-hmm. thing. That's good. That's what you want. Yeah, that's what you Put want. Put it on the stone. Or, on the stone. Um, you either want it like that, or some once in a while I'll crave a pepperoni slice, but you know what I'll do? I'll stick it in the oven for an extra like five minutes or so. And that's when it's like burnt. Burn, I'm talking about. And that's what I but you have to be in the mood for that. But the pepperoni tastes a little bit better. Yeah, some something about it just tastes better. I'm like, ooh, that hit the spot. That hit the yeah. spot. But you have to be in the mood for it. It's not like an everyday thing where you know you burn the pizza intentionally. Yeah, it, it has to be precise timing. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. That's I, I say so. Yeah. Okay. I see that. Yeah. I have nothing wrong with cooking. Like burning something, honestly. Like when I roast marshmallows, I burn it because it's to. got texture just and it's like, got just flavor. Like hot dogs. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, All the people the boil food. hot dogs. What? Why? You There's should be kicked off planet food. Earth, Earth, if you boil a hot dog, and it's not, oh. and if and it's not near black on the outside. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it's got to be on the barbecue. Got to grill it or on the open flame, like a fire pit or whatever. Yeah. Got to do it like the yeah. real deal. On the barbecue or over the fire. That's it. No ifs, ands, or buts. Got it. You got to do it like that. You, you, you know what's funny? If you is, do it any other way, you're wrong. You're just wrong. Yeah. yeah. You're just, living. You're funny, living life the wrong way if you do it any other way. We we talk. We're talking about all this food and stuff on Twitter. No, you're not on Twitter often, but. No. There's always in Rangers Twitter always a discussion on food. Every now and then you always see like a picture of someone posting a pizza or someone talking about like a, a food take, like what's the what's better, waffles or pancakes. Here's one of the, here's like a nice discussion we have right now about what how the how pizza should be cooked and how hot dogs should be cooked. Like this is important stuff right here. Uh there is literally nothing going on in the hockey world right now. And we have literally nothing to talk about baseball wise, except for the trade deadline. Yep. Speaking of the trade deadline, Juan Soto, is he gonna get traded? Yes, he is. Yes. They're like eight. I just read something maybe like an hour and a half ago. They're like 80% sure that he's gonna be get, he's gonna get traded because the nationals actually just uh sent over an offer either last night or this morning. And that was their final push for him. And f- from what it looks like, I'm guessing, is that he'll most likely decline it and look to get somewhere, to be somewhere else. No, I, I don't think – no amount of money is going to keep Juan Soto on the Nationals. No. I, what did they offer him before? It was like $400 million, right? It, that it would have like, made him the highest paid player, no? Yeah. It was in baseball. Oh, we what did Trout get? We are gonna look that up right now because we need I, to know. I know. I know he got like a. He might have gotten like four twenty five. To be honest, four twenty six and a half million dollars. Holy moly, Bajoli Cole. Over what? Twelve years, I think it was. Uh, how long is Mike Trout's twelve years? Twelve years, four hundred twenty six point five million dollars. Boy, am I good. Um, no, but Soto's their their offer. I think it was fourteen or fifteen years 
for 440, I think. 440 or 450. I'm like, what? He's making $17 million right now. <laughs> Soto? Soto, yeah. $440 million over 15 years. And Trout's was 426.5 over 12 years. But do you know what the crazy part is? Soto is 23 years old. Mike Trout, yes. at, the, at the time of that contract, when he when he signed it, I'm not sure when it starts, but at the time of the contract, I believe he was 27 or 28. He's 30 now, and I think he signed it in 2019. So, so was that three, three years, ago? years ago? 27 years old. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? 20, 27 to 23. And look, Tati signed a contract as well. He signed. He signed a big contract, and he'll he'll get a new one. <laughs> he'll get a new contract when he's like thirty-two or something like that. Lindor, that, Lindor got one million dollars more than Lindor got one million dollars more than Tatis because when they were signing, right? yeah, he got, Tatis got three forty and Lindor got three forty-one. I remember that because it's I like I, I I thought that was funny because it was like a competition. Like Lindor wanted to make more than Tatis. But you know like what? That's why he, that that was my thinking. Like that's why he didn't sign oh, totally until very was. late. Until the totally. What's that? But do you know? Do you know why he got that contract? Steve Cohen. Bingo bango. Because Uncle Steve will just write a check and he whatever give him a blank check, no problem. We'll pay for it. It's no problem whatsoever. He'll have no he, problem paying for anything. Look, he's gonna do the same thing for Degrom in the offseason. He better. He better. Like literally the first thing. As soon as Degrom opts out, I have I'm going to have a contract in my back pocket right there for for Jacob Degrom. Like, all right, yeah, I'll see you in spring training. Sign this. Like, there's no shot you're gonna you're going to the Braves. I I saw that report. I think it was Ken Rosenthal. Someone said someone from Bleacher Report. I don't know if it was Ken Rosenthal. Mm -hmm. I might have jumped the gun there. Sorry, but it was on Bleacher Report. I saw. Can Jacob Degrom go to the Braves this offseason? They're they're the front runners. He wouldn't they're the front the runners. Braves. No yeah. shot. If the if Degrom goes to the Braves, I will I will be internally scarred forever. That would be that would be the biggest pain. No, he he'd come to uh you know the red and white pinstripes. No. Yeah. No. I could I could see him doing that. No, I, I could see Wheeler doing that. Wheeler, it makes sense, did not it. DeGrom. Yeah, because he did do it. Yes, not Look, DeGrom. Though. And he's been arguably the best pitcher in baseball since he joined the Phillies. Uh, yeah, you got, you, you got a point. You got a Top point five. there. You got a point there. Yeah, Look, he's been he should, he should He should have won Cy, Cy Young last year. Who, who won? Cor- Corbin Burns, Corbin right? Corbin Burns. Look, he was good, but Wheeler pitched like 50 more innings than he did. Hmm. And his arm stayed intact too. Wheeler's arm always falls off. Yeah, right. Like he always, he, he always got hurt with the Mets. Like his, we just had the All Star break, and you know he usually his fastball usually sets like ninety seven to hundred, and right now last night it topped out at like ninety seven. He was he was sitting like ninety five, ninety six all game, but he, I think he's like a slow starter back. Like his first few starts of the season, he was only sitting like ninety four, ninety five. Because he didn't get the spring training, but once he really gets into it, that's when he can start dotting him up and you know throwing ninety eight, ninety nine, hundred, especially with that sinker too. Oh, he's a damn good pitcher, Wheeler. I remember his very first start with the Mets. His major league debut was against the Braves. It was like six or seven innings. That was a, a an awesome, awesome debut uh, for for him. He came over in the Beltron trade. Uh, yeah, and I don't know. That, yeah, 2011. The Giants drafted Wheeler like fifth overall in, in, in I forget what year it was, but then the Mets traded Beltron at the deadline for Zach Wheeler straight up. To the Giants? Yes, San Francisco Giants. Yes. Beltron played on the Giants? Yes, for half a that. season. Half, yeah, because it wasn't long. It was a half a season, and the Giants oh. didn't even make the playoffs. Wow. Yeah, so they the Giants lost big time on that trade. Wow. Wow. Yep. That's crazy. Look, and that's the thing that that's the stuff that's crazy. 
you know, you see like these prospects, you know, double A, single A. You're like, ah, yeah, he's 22 and he's still in single A or something like that or double A. Yeah, he's he doesn't never going to pan out. Baseball is so weird most, with how like the minors. And a lot are. of time that that's the case. In baseball, that a lot of time that's the case. But yeah, you never know. I mean, you never know. Look, Remember, but as an organization, you always have those like five prospects or so that are protected completely. Where it doesn't matter what you get offered, you're not going to trade them away because you know that they are good in minor leagues and they have strong potential. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like when you draft a prospect in baseball, you almost never see them for like a guarantee in the majors for guaranteed five years. I feel like yeah, unless sometimes. they're incredibly, really, like really, really good. Like, but in hockey, you could see them as soon as possible or as as late as three years. Yeah, goaltenders is like five years. Goaltenders like Shesterkin got drafted in two thousand fourteen. And he debuted in 2020, like the 1920 season. And look, for and for minor leaguers in baseball, 75% of them don't even make the big leagues ever. Yeah. Ever. It's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. There's a lot. Look, yeah, it's, hard to get, it's hard to get drafted. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to get drafted. And they need to – it's unbelievable. Michael Conforto's still a free agent, right? He hasn't signed with anybody. No, he hurt his shoulder. Yeah, so it's I remember so, I think, when he was drafted, crazy. he was drafted in 10th overall 2014. The very next year, he was on the Mets. That was, like, the craziest yeah. thing. Like, he one second he got promoted to double-A, and the next second he was on the Mets. Same thing happened with Soto, too. He got promoted to triple-A, I think. And this he was funny immediately story. good. He he got he got promoted to I think it was either double A or triple A, and he his manager who whatever le- whatever level was at his manager was like hey son you know you might want to sleep on a real bed because he was using like an air mattress he goes you might want to use a real bed you know we got a long season here and Soto goes well I don't plan on being here much longer and like a week and a half later or something like that he got called up to the big leagues wow yeah. What, what, whether it was double A or triple A, I forget, but I see that off. I see that time to time, and every time I'm like, oh, that's incredible. Because he got cold, called up, I, man. Th- I think he got called up at 19 years old in 2000. He was definitely a teenager when he first started. Yeah, he, he was I think definitely he was, a teenager. I think it was 2018 when he got the call up. He's so good. Soto is so good. I've been hearing the Padres as like a landing spot for him. I don't know what they're going to give up. Maybe they give up the Crone Zone for him. You think they give up Cronenworth? It's got to be like major league ready players. It's got to be right. For or is it going to be all prospect? I would say someone who's been in the league who can really prove himself. Top, either top top prospects or someone whose career is just starting. That's what I say. Like Cronenworth, okay. yeah. Or you know what? You might want to trade an outfielder too, because Soto's gonna have to play in the outfield. Or they could trade. I've heard that they could try. Uh, what's it called? Playing? Oh well. Hosmer. They, Never mind. They could try yeah, Hosmer, Hosmer is a good one. And get that contract off of themselves, because he's, yeah. he's still in, out of seven years. He still has like I think three years remaining, two or three years remaining, and it's like thirty mil, twenty thirty mil a year. Yeah, and then the Nationals could even flip him. Like, they could take him and then yeah. flip him and get even more back for him. Yeah. Like, in next year's deadline, let's say, or in the following year's deadline. Like, that's what happened when we uh, traded for Gene Segura. We traded, uh, we got him from Seattle. We traded away Carlos Santana. You remember Carlos Santana? Yeah, yeah. He was very we, brief, Philly. Yeah, he, he was there for a year. We signed him to, like, a three-year contract. We signed him, we signed him in 2018. In the offseason going into the 18th season and in the offseason they traded him away to seattle and seattle had him for like seven hours and they traded him to back to cleveland i think yeah yeah th- I, that rings a bell yeah because i remember he did end up back in cleveland anyways mm-hmm. yeah and now he's and now I, now he got traded back to seattle because he signed with he, he signed with kansas city 
in the offseason, oh, this past offseason. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. just got traded like three weeks ago or something like that to Seattle. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And yeah, so look, and if baseball, you're smart, and if, if you're smart, the GM if the GMs play their cards right, then you could get you could turn one asset into more than one, like two assets, you know. Mm-hmm. Like trading Soto would turn into Hosmer as well, who you could then trade into get more, more pieces prospects. back. You could mm-hmm. get two more prospects. So you could get like Hosmer and like three or four prospects, let's say. Yeah, and then you, know you could trade Soto, you're gonna they're gonna have to do like the top tier prospects. Yeah, they what because was it for the, Otani? It was like the top four prospects in the organization. Yeah, yeah. So like, Soto, like, I would say the same thing. Like their top four or their top four prospects in their organization, one through four, and that's it. Like they weren't gonna go below that. I'm like, we, what? Do you, you really think that like a team will be able to get it done before Tuesday? Like Otani? Tuesday, the deadline's at 6, 6 p.m., right? Yeah. Otani? No, not to Otani. Uh, Soto. Soto. Oh, yeah. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. But uh, you know yeah. what? I think I think he's going to go to uh, the Cardinals, actually. Really? Oh, that's so boring. I, I think so. I think so. I'm worried about that. I'm not going to lie. Um, uh... Because right now, the Phillies and the Cardinals are – uh, in a close battle for that third wild card spot, and if they get Soto, um, then Philly's gonna have some problem. <laughs> to be honest, um, but that's the thing you can't you don't you don't want the Dodgers or the Padres to get Soto. You you just don't want that as a baseball fan. You just don't want that. It, yeah, I want Soto to go to the American League, preferably not the Yankees. For my no, sanity, I can't, I can't. They just got Benintendi. I can't see them. I can't see them going after. That's true. Soto. That, you know what's so funny? Literally minutes after the Mets beat the Yankees in the second game in the Subway Series, I got a notification: breaking news: okay. Yankees trade for Andrew Benintendi. Finalized. For three prospects. And you know what? Like finalized. Literally minutes after that game. It's just like mm-hmm. Brian Cashman was not fooling around. It's just like, yeah, we suck. We're getting this guy well, right just, now. Well, they're done with Gallo. Yeah. Done with Gallo. <laughs> they're, they're done with him. Yeah, we were thinking about the Don LeGreca rant at the same time. That was that was the best thing in the world. Yeah, honestly, like that was just such a great – I love Don. Like, Don, if you're listening to this, I love you, man. Like, this is that, – that was just the – incredible that was awesome like, that was i that was probably the best rant <laughs> i've definitely on sports radio i've ever seen or heard um but it might be one of the best rants <laughs> in my life that i've heard <laughs> i it's definitely it's definitely up there the christian bale rant for me is i don't know if you've heard that one on like the terminator set you sh- if you haven't you no, should so. watch when we finish this i'll i'll, I'll watch that I'll, I'll send that one to you but um, the other one was Ed Cranepool. Ed Cranepool, yes, that one. That was a good. That was, a, that was Ed Cranepool good. and Jose Reyes. Those were, those were Don Lagreca's like some of his greatest moments right there. Yes. Also, in terms of rants of all time, the Christmas Vacation rant scene. Uh, if you've seen that movie, you know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about. Like that. That That's was an all time rant. I have that rant on a T-shirt. Like Do that's you? how much I love that movie. Yeah, I love Christmas Vacation. You that's my what? favorite. I haven't seen that movie in such a long time. Yeah, that's a that's one like traditionally like my family we try to watch that once every Christmas season. The Christmas that one because that is Vacation. a good movie. Yeah, Chevy that's Chase. A very good it's movie. like it's old. It's an old one, but like that that one scene just is is incredible. Like the the rant is is that's how I, sometimes that's how I feel with customers. Honestly. At the pizzeria. Are you kidding me? Some of them. <laughs> and I say this to a lot of people. <laughs> I say this to a lot of people. And I think, I, Joe, I think I've told you this before. You don't know real stupidity of people until you've worked in the food business. Oh, yeah. The food industry. Yeah. The food industry, the food business. That's when you really understand and see the pure stupidity of people. That and, and we're not excluded from that conversation. I'll yeah. have you know, like, uh, yeah. honestly, I've done some pretty stupid stuff without thinking, yeah. like, yeah, like, what the hell am I thinking? Like, honestly, like, why yeah. did I do this? Yeah, like, and you know what? It could be the last person you see of the day, and they could just ruin your day. 
they like it we could be closing and that person could be coming in and just for some reason they do whatever it is what whatever whatever even might be it could just ruin your day just like that mm -hmm. just like that you're having a great day you know blah 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 but they could just ruin your day just like right. that it and yeah it, it whatever they say what they do something 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 that happens could tick either one of you off and it's yep. just oh it's you're walking on eggshells at that point i don't know it's hard to describe without like going into like a specific situation which i can't really think of right now but it does happen noah's right yeah like you you gotta be careful with that if you're in the food interest industry like you probably I, just, I, just, I just had one come up to my head that that only happened a few weeks ago actually okay. the one with that delivery to uh uh hopewell but she oh put and it was the wrong address. address okay yeah so yeah that that was crazy because like it was a web delivery so we we literally could not do anything about it so the address by default was already punched in incorrectly so we went in the complete opposite direction the food was not delivered mm -hmm. and then so the customer had to come in we had to make it again and we both had to own up to our mistakes because we didn't call to confirm and she didn't tell give us the right address in the first place. If she's so listening, we're... if she's listening, it was her fault. Oh God. Oh God. It, was, it was her fault. She goes, oh, well, I wasn't paying God. attention. I said, we no kidding, you weren't paying attention. The customer is always right, even when they're wrong. Nah, eh, customer's the always customer wrong. is always even, right. Customer's always wrong, even when they're right. What is what, what is Mr. Crab saying, SpongeBob? Remember the money's always right. <laughs> You know, we as I've gotten older, that show. that show SpongeBob has gotten like I it makes a lot, it makes related a lot of more to it and understood it now. Yeah. Like, cause that show was originally intended for adults. So, like now I should go back and watch like the first three seasons. Cause like the first three, four seasons maybe are like the 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 best that show has to offer. Like I don't know how the show's still going on now, but like first three, there's definitely some like adult related humor in in that. Yeah. Look, and that was a lot of shows that we grew up watching, like on Nick, Nickelodeon, or any of like those other channels. You look at it now, and you're like, what? Like at the time when you were four or five, you know, watching, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 whatever. And you think, you know, you think everything's funny and stuff like that. But then you look back at it now, 15 years later, 20 years later, whatever it is. And you're like, well, now I understand that joke and right you know, that's like well that's not for kids i right. saw i saw like like a, uh ash roasting misty comp like thing the other day and it's like if you're looking for a pretty girl just look behind you and <laughs> ash is just like from pokemon ash is just like yeah uh i forget what he said but it was like yeah yeah misty i'm not even looking at you or something like that it was just like such a a casual like oh my gosh i just destroyed your life Jeez. moment kind of thing and like none of us even realized it yeah nowadays i think like the like, shows are m more really geared towards kids like they're actually made for kids yeah like there's ca there's cartoons like you could go back like even now and watch and it'd still be okay like i can go back and watch danny phantom and it would still fit my age because that's what i love I love Danny, show, Phantom. Danny Phantom was a great show. Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, mm -hmm. SpongeBob SquarePants, um, all those. Was it Rocco's? Uh, I forget what the Rocco's World or something like that. Hey Arnold, another one is that's another good one. Tom and Jerry was a good one too. Like simple, best. simple humor, like yeah. old, old, old cartoon Looney Tunes, old, 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 old cartoon time. Chuck Jones. I think that was who, who tom who, and jerry i think i watch probably every day every single day when yeah. I was a kid. yeah that was you know their seven minute clips or whatever it was but it was the best yep that, i always loved that that was the best it's just like like the no the no dialogue made it better it's yeah. just like you have you you just look at their reactions like their, their facial expressions and stuff like that we don't have that today. We have all these sound effects and visual effects and stuff going all over the place. You know what else is going all over the place? This podcast episode, we've touched everything. We touched pizza, Kevin Weeks, 
Uh, oh, wait, one more thing I got to say. So another, another thing, back to the pizza, back to the pizza story, back to the pizza story. So, um, one last thing. So when we're training new counter helpers, new cashiers to, to work, um, how to answer phones and stuff. The one thing we always say, every, whoever's answering the phone, it's just like, thanks for calling Noah's Pizzeria. Instead of thanks for calling New World Pizza, we said, thanks for yeah. calling Noah's Pizzeria. I'm going to help you. I was, I was about this close to saying, thanks for calling Kevin Weeks's Pizzeria. Like yesterday when I picked up the phone. Like yesterday. Actually, I was like thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, Kevin Weeks just responded. Thanks for calling. That. Oh, wait, this is New World. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong Pizzeria. What's going on, NHL fans? This is Kevin Weeks reporting from New World. Like, you imagine that if Kevin Weeks comes to New World and like <laughs> answers what, a phone call. What would you do if he came into the pizzeria? I will have peak. I think you. I, think I will have down. peak. I would fall down. Yeah, you'd need to. You need to catch. You, me. you. You would definitely freak out, and I would just be probably just standing there laughing. To be honest, I'd be freaking out. The guys in the back would be laughing at me and poke fun at me for the rest of my life. Like every single day, they'd imitate me, like falling down or something like that. I, that's I, what the guys do. I love I, the guys in the. Store, that's though. what they do. That's what they do. They they have nothing better to do than right. just to make fun. Yeah, but anyways, Noah, thanks so much for doing this with me. Fun episode. Fun Absolutely. episode. If you stuck with us all the way through, I appreciate you. Kevin Weeks, if you're listening, I'll send you a pizza as soon as possible. Just open just get, your DMs. Just get back to him. Just get back. Just DM him back. So I, first off, DM him back so you can get that free pizza. And second off, DM him back so I don't have to hear it every day. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna start day one of hashtag asking for day, asking today, for weeks. Today's today. day one. Today's day one. Today is day one of hashtag asking mm-hmm. for weeks to open his DMs. Yep. At today's Kevin Weeks. Kevin. Kevin months. You Kevin know, months. Might, it might, it, honestly, it might turn into Kevin months again. Kevin yeah, months for listening. Again. Just do it. Just do it. We want it to be Kevin seconds. That's what. That's the good thing right there. Within seconds, Kevin seconds. That's good. I like that. We should have done that actually. But you know what? He didn't respond. I would so, have even done good with Kevin minutes. You can do with Kevin days. Kevin days. Kevin you, days you, is good. See, but that's less than a week, though. So he days has is less than a week. He, he has, you he have a, you have you have a week to to respond. We got to get it next week, Kevin. Less, less than less than a week. You need you need we need it by what's today Friday Thursday. We need we, we need, need by th- we need by Thursday at like. Two thirty was it two thirty? Yeah, two thirty. We need we need it next Thursday at two thirty p.m. Eastern time. Eastern time. That's it. All wherever right. wherever he might be. All right. Well, Kevin, thank you for responding. Noah, thanks for doing this with me. Ice cold takes listeners. You're awesome, and I love you. Just take it easy, and we'll see you next week.